Howdy folks, welcome to the channel. This is Eggnog. Normally on this channel, we um, do VR streams. Uh, that's kind of what I like to, to focus on, sort of that first person view. Uh, as, a, as a part of that, a lot of times, uh, because I'm basically always streaming my flights, sometimes I, I'll capture a, a particularly good one. Um, so, the, so the idea behind this, uh, hopefully what's the beginning of a, a series, take some of those better flights, and um, kind of break them down, talk through what was going through my head uh, at any given moment, sort of the way I think about things. Uh, I should be clear right up front, I'm by no means any kind of fighter ace. Uh, I really don't know that much about BFM, but I'm decent. Look me up on, on finish. Uh, I shoot folks down, right? Uh, more often than I get shot down, and I, I think that's kind of the goal. Uh, I'm actually hoping that sort of my lack of knowledge of BFM and tactics and sort of the language of that whole um, world uh, maybe makes this series a little bit more approachable to uh, beginners or, 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 or more casual flyers. Um, uh, so with all of that in mind, I think we'll just dive right into to this particular um, fight. You know, maybe just to talk through kind of the context, clearly the weather is, is, is heavy, uh, it's cloudy, it's rainy today. Uh, I'm alone, I don't have any of my uh, uh, 332 buddies um, winging up with me uh, this particular time. Um, and I'm on the Finnish server, the Finnish uh, Virtual Pilots Multiplayer server, um, which, is, which is where I typically fly. I'm in a Hurricane uh, with 12 303 machine guns. Uh, it's a fairly light armament, but it's a lot of them, uh, so if you can hit them, uh, especially at convergence. It can do a, a fair amount of damage. It's pretty good at, at lighting fires. Um, typically when I'm flying alone on finish, I'll actually avoid going to the front lines, uh, which is actually where I'm headed uh, in, in this clip. A lot of times what happens at the front, and the reason I'll typically avoid it if I'm alone, is um, as soon as tracers start firing, um, bandits just swarm to that area like, like vultures. Uh, so you can go from a nice little one-on-one -on -one to uh, a pretty desperate situation very quickly, very unpredictably. Um, uh, it's very hard to control uh, the fight uh, around the front on a clear and sunny day. Um, but with a little extra cloud cover, uh, I think my chances are a little better, and I decide to uh, get in there for, for hopefully some quick action. So at this point in time, I've literally seen nothing but one uh, ally. I'm skimming the bottom of the clouds and just kind of scanning. I've seen no action. Um, but that's all just about to change. Listen to the comms. The greatest puzzle for me is the fact that I don't see... Oh, here we go. Ground fire. So two things have happened at this point in time. Um, like I say, I'm scanning and I see on the ground uh, some, some tracers going up into the air. Uh, so some ground fire. I call it out and I'm, I'm looking in that direction. You also see me check radar quick. That's to see if anything's marking the radar. Turns out there is. So I'm thinking if friendly ground fires up and there's one marking, this is maybe a doable fight. That means there's one in the area. Uh, that uh, is, is probably looking at the ground. Maybe I can uh, get the jump on him. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to get eyes on the aircraft himself. There he is. So you can see right away, as soon as I get visual on him, I turn towards. And he fires off a flare there. I don't know if that's because he's spotted me or if he's trying to link up with uh, one of his buddies. I'm still not quite sure what that flare was, was all about. Because the way he flies, uh, it, it doesn't really seem like he's seen me. So I keep chasing down. As far as I know, he's still alone. I'm looking around, making sure nobody's coming behind me. As long as he's alone, and I can ride kind of below him like this, I'm going to press. You can see I got some hits on him there, uh, and he's immediately kind of woken up, and he's doing some sudden evasive uh, maneuvers while he kind of figures out what's going on. Uh, mistake on my part there was probably firing a little too early. Yes, I got hits, uh, but because he was still kind of far out, 
Uh, I certainly didn't hit him at convergence. When I'm flying a Hurricane with um, this many machine guns, I typically go for a very tight uh, convergence. I'm talking 180 meters. Um, and then I'll set my gun sight uh, to 180 meters or uh, about 200 yards um, for, a, for a wingspan of, um, of a 109. Um, so you can see when I pulled the trigger, he was actually quite a bit smaller um, than, than what my um, gun sight would, uh, would recommend. Uh, actually, right about now, where I've got it frozen, would be where I could hit him at convergence. So even though I got some hits on him, it was probably only with a handful of my guns. Uh, hardly going to do any significant damage, especially with the 303s. So here he goes evasive. I get a few more hits on him, and I'm just following him. Now to his credit, he did a, a pretty good job going evasive, and now he's shooting off flares, asking for help. Near, near collision there. But when a 109 gets into a you know, sort of a turn and burn mode like this against a hurricane. I mean, that's just a, that's just a gift to a hurricane pilot because the hurricane can turn like no other. I mean, I could just drift behind him. What I should have done is come back on throttle a bit because he's clearly slowed down. So I'm going to pause here. He clearly slowed down there, uh, and he's trying to reverse me. So he slowed down and he started weaving. Um, He's trying to force an overshoot, and he actually succeeded. If you watch my thrust um, indicator over on the top right, you'll see I'm, I, I stayed maxed out the whole time. When I, uh, when I was closing that distance, especially when I got closer than convergence, I really should have brought that back to halfway or, or even less maybe to try and uh, maintain my position behind him. But the moment that I've seen he's beating me in this scissors and he's slow, I think I make a really good decision here, and that's while he's sort of turned away from me, cross vector to me, I'm going to dump my nose and dive and, and sort of try to run. Uh, and that's what I'm doing in this moment. I've seen that he's beating me in the scissors, so I just opt to uh, <laughs> evacuate. Now the problem is, oh, there goes somebody. It, it looked friendly to me, so I, I sort of don't worry about him. Um, the problem is, at this point, I didn't trust that I actually had a speed advantage over this gun. I turned, uh, and that actually kind of started to allow him to catch back up. So you can see, especially early in this fight, I'm, I'm making a lot of decisions, uh, and it's costing me a, a bit. He's scoring some hits on me. Um, so what I'm trying to do now is just sort of be unpredictable as much as I can. So lots of dipping the wings back and forth, trying to keep an eye on him. And here, as he's getting close, I'm gonna pull real hard. Uh, now it's my turn to try and force him into an overshoot. You can see it actually kind of works there. I'm getting him into a, a pretty good scissor situation here. There, he's already having to cross with me directly. So I'm forcing him into a pretty good scissor here. And he goes high, and I think, well, this is a good time for me to try again to get out of here. So I extend and run. He seems like he's diving for the deck. Sure enough. So I'm just running. Just running. I think at this point I'd maybe getting away from him. But then I see... I'm going to pause here. That forward guy I ID is a, a friendly, which to me says the guy trailing behind is, uh, is an enemy. So now I'm thinking, okay, what do I need to do here? Uh, I could probably use uh, a little help. <laughs> so maybe if I uh, clear my friendly he'll come back and, and help me so what I'm going to do is try to push towards um, the the trailing bandit there uh, with the knowledge that someone's chasing me but he's he's behind a little bit so I start pushing over you can see the white stream of the bandit that's still looking at me I push slowly over and then get behind him and take some shots and unfortunately not not really very good shots You see I just blew through and now uh, now my guys back on my tail again Take some long shots. I must have scored a hit or or at least managed to scare him because he um, He shoots up into the air And I see these tracers going all over all around me. So I hit the deck again just trying to stay unpredictable 
A dogfight is really a, a game of probabilities. You've got uh, a certain, uh, you know, chance of survival when you enter it, and every move you make needs to be aimed at improving those odds. Uh, it's really hard to guarantee that you can win. There's just too many factors, but what you can do is, is boost your odds. Uh, you can do that by staying unpredictable, pulling tight turns like this, making it harder for them to see you, follow you. Um, you can do that by, you can boost your odds by trying to keep as many of the bandits in front of you as possible uh, and, and controlling the fight in, in that way. You can see, for example, now I've got all three of them. Yeah, I guess it's up to three now uh, out in front of me. That's a good way to control the fight. Um, and the last, uh, the last thing you can do to sort of boost your odds of survival is just to stay alive. You know, survive as long as you can. And hope that uh, help will arrive. So you can see I've slotted in behind this guy now by, again, keeping him in front of me and being unpredictable. And he's trying to play that same turn and burn game with a hurricane and I'm just laying into him can't get away, set him on fire he's done for so now there's two left both of them are behind me so I'm going to try and turn around and see if I can force him in front this guy's kind of doing a a weird sort of back and forth a lot of looping oh, but there's someone on my six Time to hit the deck and uh, try to get control of this. He's right on me. I see that. So I'm trying to turn him, trying to outturn him, but my energy state's not that good right now. Probably could have used some flaps and, and certainly could have used boost in this moment. He scores a very good hit on me. I fly like I'm going to hit the ground. Basically, I'm just trying to force him into a spot where he can't just ride my low six. So it pushes him off the side, I chop a little throttle, and now I start to weave. Now watch this. <laughs> and then there was one. Hey, I don't care how the help arrives, as long as it does. Again, this is just hold out, especially while you're disadvantaged and outnumbered. Just frustrate your enemy until there's nothing left they can do. Now at this point, I'm weaving with this guy, but I'm nervous about my ammo state. I don't really think I've got the bullets left to uh, engage him. So I'm going to drop it right there. He did that big high looping maneuver. Clearly he's recovered from it. I could pretty easily now turn around and get behind him because he's just trying not to hit the ground. However, like I say, I'm worried about my ammo state. So I actually see this as a moment of he's lost me. He's worried about one thing right now and that's not hitting the ground. I'm pointed in the direction I want to be flying. I'm oriented toward home base. Because of those reasons, I decide time to run. Time to get out of here because he's not going to be able to follow me. He's probably not going to see me. He's uh, he's not going to be able to chase me. So that concludes this dogfight diagnostic. Again, main takeaways from today were um, um, a dogfight is a, a game of probabilities, and all you're trying to do is boost your odds any any way you can. Um, in this case. That was primarily through uh, evasive maneuvering and just being unpredictable. Controlling the fight by keeping my enemies in front of me, no matter how many there are. And um, holding out until help arrives. So hope that was helpful, informative, maybe even entertaining. And uh, if so, I, I hope maybe you'll consider a sub and, and come back for more. Uh, thanks so much. I hope you all have just a fantastic day.